Method 1633 is a new draft EPA method for the analysis of 40 PFOS compounds in wastewater samples, solid samples, and even fish tissue. In addition, Method 1633 is required for PFOS analysis if you are doing DOD testing. If you have an existing DOD contract and you're analyzing for PFOS, then you need to switch over to Method 1633 now. In addition, if you are running wastewater samples, soil samples, fish tissue, or any non-potable water samples by a Method 533 or 537.1 modified, then you need to switch over to Method 1633. Method 1633 is unique in that it's a draft method and the EPA administrator sent a letter out to all the states saying that this method is suitable for NPDES compliance reporting. Normally when EPA wastewater issues a method, the method would be fully complete with a full interlab study, all the text in it would be finalized, and the data in the method would be the data that you as a laboratory would have to meet. Because this is a draft method, that means that the language in the method is subject to change. And not only that, the data in the method, including the, date, the quality control acceptance criteria is also subject to change. Fortunately for us, the method is now undergoing collaborative study. So eventually this language is going to be cha changed and finalized. But the problem is, as a laboratory, as you set up to run 1633 now, you need to expect that you are going to have to change some of the, your own QC criteria and that some of the language of the method is going to change in the future. Method 1633 is like three or even four methods all wrapped up into one. Method 1633 includes an extraction and analysis for clean water samples, for water samples that contain high percent solids, for solid samples, and for fish tissue. Method 1633 is an isotope dilution method, or as it's called in the method, an extracted isotopically labeled internal standard method. Method 1633 extracts the samples and then it does solid phase extraction and then it analyzes them by LCMSMS. The main difference between methods 533, 537.1, and 1633 are that 533 and 537.1 were written for UCMR or for the analysis of clean water matrices such as drinking water. In addition, method 537.1 is actually an, ex an internal standard calibration method, whereas method 533 and 1633 are both isotope dilution calibration methods. So in essence, 533 and 1633 are actually very similar for clean water samples. If you're measuring water samples by 533 and they're clean, you're basically measuring samples by method 1633 as well. Method 1633 is actually the first EPA method to include language regarding relative standard error, or RSE, in the text of a method. You may recall that a few years back, EPA added the option to use RSE at 40 CFR Part 136.6. This was added because use of the correlation coefficient was not sufficient to correctly judge the the goodness of a fit of a calibration curve, especially when large orders of magnitude were used. However, if you use RSE, it does give you whether or not a curve is good, even if you have a curve that encompasses several, if not five or six orders of magnitude. It's new in a lot of methods, but you don't have to worry because Shimazu software has a calculation for RSE in it. Some of the main challenges of implementing method 1633 are, number one, the method is still in draft phase, which means that as you implement the method inside your laboratory, eventually some of the QC criteria and other parts of the method may change, 
meaning that you might have to change some of your SOPs to compensate for the language that changed in the method. In addition, method 1633 in itself includes three if not four SOPs within it. So to put this method in operation in your laboratory, you're going to have to make a extraction procedure for clean water that's method 1633, an extraction procedure for water that contains solids as a extraction for as a SOP for method 1633, an extraction for the solid samples as a method 1633, and an extraction for fish tissue as method 1633. So in my opinion, one of the biggest problems with the method in itself is that you have about four various SOPs and extraction processes and workflows passing through your laboratory. One other thing that may be different for most labs that's included in 1633 is the bile acid uh, versus PFOS, PFOS, PFOS that in your chromatogram and your method. Those two need to be one minute apart. If you're running short methods to get the throughput, you are going to have to change your chromatography to make sure that these two peaks are one minute apart. High suspended solids will actually interfere with the solid phase extraction process. If a sample contains a high amount of suspended solids, when you try to pass them through the SPE cartridge, the SPE cartridge will clog up. Since method 1633 is made for samples that are dirty, that means that your samples are probably going to contain high amounts of, of suspended solids. So therefore, the method has an extra procedural step in it where you receive your sample, you have two bottles, one for the extraction of the PFOS and another sample for the, extra, for the analysis of TSS. So that would go into your TSS laboratory and you would analyze it for total suspended solids. And then that information would have to be known so that it can be used before you can actually run your samples or extract your samples. Another aspect, not necessarily TSS, is you need to know the percent moisture in solid samples, and that percent moisture data is used for your final volume calculation of your solid sample. So if you are extracting solid samples, you have to do your percent moisture first, and then you would need to know that percent moisture data before you can bring your extract to final volume. Isotope dilution is a calibration technique, just like external standard or internal standard calibration are. The difference is that in isotope dilution, you add labeled analytes to your sample, and then you extract your sample and analyze it, and the isotopes are used as calibration standards to ratio against your targeted analytes. By doing this, you can correct for recovery and you're gonna get better precision. When you get the better precision, you actually calculate lower detection limits using isotope dilution than you would from the, any other calibration technique because you've factored in the imprecision of the extraction process. And you've also factored in the incomplete recovery of the extraction process, making isotope dilution actually give you much better data than you would get from an external standard or even an internal standard calibration. In method 1633, there's an option to pre-screen all your samples before running them through the solid phase extraction and LCMS procedure described in, method, in the method itself. Rather, I suggest that rather than doing this pre-screen by aliquoting out of the 500 ml bottle, you instead send out a smaller bottle and run ASTM method D8421. That way, if you run method D8421, which we suspect will also be proposed for EPA approval, you will get an EPA reportable result if your samples are of a concentration high enough to be seen by the pre-screening method. The pre-screening method detection limit would be about 10 picograms per liter, and your EPA 1633 method detection limits would be about 10 times lower. Shimazu has two great instruments perfectly suitable for method 1633. One of them, our LCMS 8050, is our mid-level instrument that will get you all the detection limits you need. The other instrument is the LCMS 8060 NX, 
which will get you the detection limits you need plus much more. It's our most sensitive instrument, which I would suggest that if you plan on doing PFOS now and in the future, you would get this instrument because as detection limits go lower and lower and lower, you're gonna to wanna to have the most sensitive instrument that you can buy today. In addition, the 8060NX is a very fast scanning instrument that will be able to allow you to be able to shorten your runs to the extent possible by the method, getting you the fastest throughput you can possibly get from any LCMS instrument available. Shimazu has analyzed all PFOS compounds by both method 1633 and ASTM method D8421. When you buy your instrument from us, not only will you get two, one of two great instruments, you will also get the method and all the operating parameters necessary for you to run the method. So when we install your instrument, we will check it out to make sure it's installed properly and it's the most sensitive it could possibly be. But not only that, we are going to install the method parameters, meaning that you're gonna have all your LC parameters installed. You're gonna have all your compounds installed. You're gonna have all your calibration levels installed. You're gonna have all your MRN transitions and your, your collision energies. Everything that you need to run the method will be there already for you. All you'll have to do once we do that is calibrate the instrument and then you'll be ready to analyze your method detection limits and your demonstration of capability. Excellence in science. Shimazu.